guys, iOS 11.4 is fast approaching. It's about to be released in just a couple weeks here. And in this video, I thought I'd bring together everything we know about it, everything that matters into one video before you update. I've personally been using it for just a couple weeks now, and I've got my own opinion to throw in there. And there are a couple things that I don't like about it, which I'll mention, but in general, everything you need to know about iOS 11.4, including all of the new features before updating. So to begin, iOS 11.4 beta 6 was released today, and there's really nothing news report in that version. So that's why I'm covering iOS 11.4 as a whole here. But the build number is still in beta as it does have the little A on the very right. We're likely to receive the gold master, the final version here in just a couple weeks, maybe even next week. And the final release date will likely be on June 4th after WWDC. But okay, anyways, the first thing that I noticed after updating personally to 11.4 is that you get some storage back. I got about two gigabytes back originally after updating to beta two. And uh, ever since then, it's been the same, but mostly whenever a new version comes out, like 11.2, 11.3, you're going to get some storage back because apps are clearing the cache. General cleanup in iOS will happen. So you will likely see some storage being returned to you. I also did notice that Face ID in iOS 11.4 tends to be much more reliable and faster than 11.3 for me personally. I don't know why. And it's definitely not a placebo. It's just generally been much better on 11.4. And the same thing goes for the app switcher. I know in iOS 11.3, Apple did improvements to this with the animations, but it seems like in 11.4, they polished it even further. It just seems very fluid in general works very well. I've had no issues. A lot of apps stay loaded in the background much better. The RAM management in general, 11.4 seems to be slightly better. And do you guys remember the black dot bug? I'm going to go ahead and do it real quick on the latest version here. So the first part is to send the small message and then I'm going to go ahead and send the larger one. And once I do receive that on my iPhone here in just a second, I'm happy to report that the messages no longer crash. This is what happens. They're abbreviated, they're shortened, but when you click on it, you don't see the whole thing. It's kind of weird. Apple did patch it. It still seems to affect the phone slightly. It does get hot and does freeze up the messages app just a little, slow it down, I mean, but it no longer makes it all white and crashes it completely. So the black dot bug has officially been fixed in iOS 11.4. And messages on iCloud is finally present. This is a feature that will also save you some storage. It was teased originally in 11.3, Apple removed it, and now in 11.4, it finally seems like Apple will be adding it. So in your iCloud settings, you'll see a new messages tab and a little toggle for it. Enable it here and you'll be able to store your iMessages on the iCloud. And AirPlay 2 is back as well. So this is another feature that was teased in 11.3. Apple removed it and now it's made its way back to iOS 11.4 with multi-room support. So here you'll get all of your AirPlay 2 options. I have two HomePods. As you can see, I get these toggles that I can control different rooms with the stock control center settings. So that's definitely nice to see. And to go with this, it's a very nice feature that Apple added to Siri you can actually ask Siri to play different speakers in different rooms, basically control multi-room with Siri. For example, you can say, hey Siri, play gold in the office, or hey Siri, play gold in the bedroom and she can contextually change where she plays the music because of that multi-room support now and the Siri support for it. And stereo pairing. So I'm a little confused by this one. Apple added reference to stereo pairing back into iOS 11.4 beta one. They removed it in iOS 11.4 beta two, and we still may see it before the final release, but don't hold your breath. Honestly, this is a feature that I feel could be very tricky and Apple wants to wait and perfect it. So maybe we'd have to wait even longer beyond iOS 11.4, so it may still surface, but stereo support seems to have came and went in 11.4. And in iOS 11.4, another feature for the HomePod is it seems to have gained support for the calendar app. You may be able to ask it to do things like set an appointment in the calendar or certain things like that's regarding the calendar because it actually showed up in the splash screen when setting up the HomePod where previously it wasn't on iOS 11.3. And for the iPhone 10, the folio cases, it seems that a feature has been added where if you actually close it and open it, you can unlock it automatically. That feature was present on other devices, not in the iPhone 10, but Apple did add that support with iOS 11.4. And there's a new security measure in iOS 11.4. This is to combat the brute forcing tools like gray key, where if you haven't used or unlocked your phone in seven days, it will lock out the lightning ports and then it's only a power port. So you won't be able to transfer data through it and thus rendering the gray key brute force tool ineffective. So that's a very great security measure implemented by Apple. If you're at all worried about that, iOS 11.4 
for is a sure bet to update too. Meanwhile, a couple other things I wanted to mention that still work, the blank spaces bug, the trick still works in the latest beta. I was able to reproduce the glitch to crash your device as well. So going here to edit, then going up here to edit and uh, doing it at the same time, clicking done and then over here done will crash your device. That still works in the latest beta, could still be fixed. And a really cool one that I found still works is the no animations bug. So you're able to reproduce that and now get no animations on the latest version of 11.4. So in a nutshell, there is iOS 11.4. Those are all of the features that Apple has introduced and they still may change a couple of things between now and the final release. But for now, this is everything we know about iOS 11.4 and that's my review of it. It's not a very big update. iOS 11.3 was considered to be pretty big this one is pretty much refinements as this will likely be the last version of iOS 11, 11.4, then we might get a smaller update or two after that. But iOS 11.4 is likely to be the last one for iOS 11. And it definitely leaves things off on a pretty good note. It's pretty responsive. It's pretty decent for older devices as well, gives you some storage back. And it does have a couple of features thrown in there as well. In any case, let's go ahead and test the speed performance using a Geekbench, see if I can get some sort of numbers out of here that are any different than iOS 11.3. 3.1. And here are the previous results from iOS 11.3. I've got a 10,286 multi, 4254 single core. Over here, pretty similar. Multi-core is a little bit higher up. Overall, the performance feels exactly the same as iOS 11.3 in all areas except for the face ID. I can definitely feel that there is a difference there. And the app switcher seems a little bit more refined as well, just works smoothly. So, okay, guys, there it is. iOS 11.4. Should you update? I say absolutely. Unless you're specifically waiting for a jailbreak or something, there's no reason not to update. But in my personal experience, the battery life has been a little bit worse than 11.3. 3.1. It honestly may be that it's still on a beta, but on iOS 11.3 beta, the battery life was better. So go figure. That's my personal experience. So yours may differ, but the battery life seems to be a little bit worse. Still may change though. Otherwise, it includes security fixes, the black dot bug, and then of course, a couple necessary features like iMessages in the iCloud and then AirPlay 2 multi-room support. So thanks for watching guys. That's iOS 11.4 and looking forward to seeing iOS 12 here in just a short couple weeks. Peace.